What's up guys? Hope you're having an awesome day. You all responded back immediately from the video I posted and uh, the results are in. We're keeping the WJ, we're gonna keep cruising on it, no Tacomas, no Wranglers here. Uh, we're just gonna keep building on this platform. And you gave me even more feedback as well, what you wanna see as more of a daily driver and capable off-road vehicle. Um, so today what we're gonna talk about is what I have into this so far, what it costs me to build, and what the next steps are. Stay tuned, let's talk about it. All right, so welcome back. Had an overwhelming response to the video uh, asking you guys what you thought about more work on the WJ or switching it up and maybe building out something else, a Wrangler or a Tacoma. Overwhelmingly, all of you said, no man, don't do it. There's too many of them out there. We really like the WJ and I really appreciate that. To be honest, um, that really just kind of backed up the work that I was doing. Um, I wanted to make sure you guys were interested in it. I wanted to make sure there was enough interest in them in general um, and there definitely is. I think this is a really great platform. They can be found for a good amount of money. Um, it's a reasonably priced rig and you can do a lot of stuff to them. Also, they're awesome. So I'm pretty pumped on that. So that's that's the deal. The other feedback I got that I think was super helpful um, is that you guys want to see uh, something that's still streetable, something I can still drive on a regular basis, um, and something that is practical. Maybe it's your only vehicle as well. Maybe, you know, you're not building a big trail rig. You want something that you can drive on road, but then go play with on the weekend, which totally makes sense. And that's really what this is for me as well. Um, so a lot of you said, you know, don't go crazy with it. Keep it a mild build. Um, make it something that, you know, the Durango isn't. We've got the Durango. That's going to be, you know, the trail rig, um, coilovers, four linked all the way around and all that good stuff. So don't do that with the WJ. And I think that's great advice. So again, thank you guys. Thank you for letting me know that. Um, it was super helpful in making the decision. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to move forward with the WJ. Um, we're going to keep building it. Um, at the end of this video, I will give you a little bit more update on what we really will be doing with it next, um, the parts and pieces that we've already got that we're putting into it, and what you can expect from the WJ next. All right, so let's start off with the platform. If you're new to the channel, um, I've built a one-ton Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ. The WJ is uh, Jeep's Grand Cherokee from 1999 through 2004. Um, the ZJ was before that, and I believe it's the WK that is after that. So. Um, I'll preempt this by saying um, I'm in the car business as well and I know that prices have been a little bit crazy. I've seen Grand Cherokees, WJs specifically, go through the auction and have 225,000 miles on them and take as much as, you know, $75, $9,500 um, for something that's in not great shape. So that said, um, I bought this in 2017. I very specifically wanted the four liter uh, with the part-time and full-time four-wheel drive and uh rather than the full-time four-wheel drive that the 4.7 liters come with. So, this is a Grand Cherokee Laredo, um, inline four-cylinder, MP242 transfer case, and uh, automatic transmission, the 42RE. Um, when I purchased mine in 2017, I bought it with about 136,000 miles on it, and I bought it tax, tags, fees, everything out the door for $4,200. So that's our first price. $4,200 will get you a base Cherokee. And I would imagine that in this market, um, and I'm, I'm sure of it because I still look around for these all the time, you should be able to pick up a pretty decent Grand Cherokee. Um, again, whether you go with the ZJ or the WJ for somewhere between 2,000 and let's say $5,000. It depends on what you want. Maybe you want an Overland with the V8 um, and you're good with the full-time transfer case and it's got a bunch more stuff on it and it's in good shape. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there so you just kinda gotta be the judge of that. But I'll say all in on this, I'm about 180,000 miles. I've put about yeah 50,000 miles on this thing total since I bought it in 2017. But 4,200 bucks is a pretty reasonable price. So uh, let's stick to that as a baseline. I actually think that that's a good kind of in-between baseline anyway. So we'll say, $4,200 for your base build. All right, so let's talk lift kits. That's usually the first thing that you want to get uh, kind of as a foundation to at least know what you're going to do next. Um, and for this one, we went with a four inch long arm kit from Rough Country. Now, we didn't end up using the four inch springs and I'll get into that a little bit more. 
So the Rough Country Long Arm Kit comes with a cross member uh, long arms in the front with a radius arm for the top, um, which kind of make it a four link. You, it comes with a track bar as well. Um, I modified this and I'll talk a little bit more about that because there were some modifications that obviously went into it um, with not putting it directly onto the Jeep. Now, if you're gonna put it directly onto your Jeep and you're not swapping the axles um, and there's no modifications to do, uh, it's probably a, well, <laughs> It's definitely a simpler path to go that route um, and it'll bolt right up and perform the way that you want it to perform right out of the box. Uh, the rear end has that upper wishbone. I think that's probably what you'd refer to it as. It's kind of like a third link. I've built custom mounts on the top of the axle in order for that to adapt there. Um, I do know that there's kits that make a plate um, that bolts to your factory mount that then allows that long um, travel from the upper link as well. So um, comes with long arms for the bottom and uh, shocks, springs all the way around, all the components. Um, you can see it on the kit on roughcountry.com. But personally, I think it's a great kit for the price. Um, it's super durable. And when you pull it out of the box, you realize how beefy it is. Um, I, I know, uh, you know there's opinions on Rough Country um, and it being some of the less expensive parts, um, but they've done such a good job with what they do, the way that they're producing it. Um, they're just awesome kits and I've beat on this pretty good. Um, and I gotta say, you know, I've got half inch, two, uh, two inch diameter, half inch thick uh, links on the Durango build that we're doing as well. And um, these are the same, you know, it's a two inch uh, arm. Um, so super beefy stuff and uh, I've had zero problems with any of that stuff so far. All right, so the Rough Country kit uh, retails for $16.50. Um, it's, it's just a really complete kit. It has everything you need. Again, if you're not doing an axle swap and you're gonna just bolt this up to your factory axles, which would be just fine, um, man, that is an incredible kit to go with. If you don't even need the long arms and you're gonna go something uh, maybe a little bit more modest at first, there's other four inch kits available from Rough Country as well. So that's the second price. The long arm kit from Rough Country, the four inch, we spent 1650 on that. So 4,200 for the Jeep, 1650 for the kit. Let's talk axles. The next decision was we weren't going to keep the factory Dana 30 and Dana 35 axles in the Jeep. Um, what I wanted to move to was something that was one ton. So that's exactly what we did. I decided to go Dana 60. Um, and when I started looking around a little bit, um, you know, originally uh, I thought maybe I'd be able to find a Super Duty front, but I just haven't been able to find them around here as easily. Um, and when I do, they're a lot of money. So what I did find is a 1992 uh, F350 Dana 60 high pinion front. Um, it's a ball joint front. Um, I've had king pins in the past. Uh, I think the king pin one that I had prior, uh, probably, I mean, it's probably a decade ago that I had it. I think that thing sold for about 1200 bucks. Um, and then in the rear, I have a Corporate 14 bolt, a GM 14 bolt. I know some of you have asked too, what do those come in? Well, this one came out of a Chevy Silverado 2500. Um, you can pretty much find them in all of the heavy duty uh, Silverados, gas or diesel, they've all got the 14 bolt. So 2004 Chevy Silverado 2500, that's a uh, corporate 14 bolt rear. And the one thing that I made sure of with both of these axles is um, I wanted something that already had gears that matched and I knew that you could find the rear end in a limited slip version and with disc brakes. So that was kind of the prerequisite. The Dana 60 front has 410 gears. The rear has a matching 410 gears and a limited slip. And that was good to start with. I wanted to see how the 410s would do with 37s. And quite honestly, when I started the build, I wasn't sure if it was gonna fit 35s or 37s or even 33s for that matter. Um, the four inch lift, everyone kind of does different things. Um, you needed to clearance the fenders and I was kind of giving myself the benefit of the doubt that it may only fit 35s at the most. Um, but we were able to, to trim enough away and uh, the lift is substantial enough that uh, 37s fit. So the axles, uh, front Dana 60, uh, rear 14 bolt, both matching uh, 410 gears, um, disc brakes front and rear, and 
the disc brakes were good to go. Uh, they're still doing really well. The pads were good on them. The discs were good on them. Um, and if you do your research and you find a good set, you should be able to find something that's already got that on there anyways, and you don't have to swap out. Um, but you know, maybe you pay a little bit less for the axles if it needs brakes or something like that. So all in on the axles, I think I'm a thousand bucks. Um, it's hard for me to remember exactly on that. I got a good friend who's got a wrecking yard here. And so I picked them up from him. Um, but we're going to say, from my best rec recollection, I spent about 200 bucks on the rear 14 bolt and about 800 bucks on the front Dana 60. I was happy with those prices. You may be able to get a better deal depending on where you are, but for me, one ton axles, 410 gears, limited slip in the rear, and good brakes all the way around, a thousand bucks seemed like a pretty good deal to me. So uh, that's where I'm at for the axles. Now, what did we put on the axles to make this thing work? Well, I used a uh, TJ one ton axle swap kit, both on the front and the rear from Artec. And the reason I did that is because um, if you kind of look around a little bit, uh, these years, uh, the 99 to 04, similar years to the Jeep TJ and very similar geometry, uh, almost exactly, for the spring perch mounts and things like that. Uh, super similar platforms, um, coil springs front and rear on both the TJ and the WJ. So that actually worked out perfectly. Um, there's other kits out there, so you might wanna check around a little bit and see what makes the most sense for you. But for me, I think these worked awesome and it gave, uh, it gave me exactly what I needed for the kit that I'm using. So uh, the front is the TJ one ton swap kit. I'll throw a photo in here so you can check it out. Um, I did upgrade with the Rock Jock Johnny joints. Um, and so that kit total, 595 for that and uh, just su a super good kit for the Dana 60. They make a super duty kit as well. There's some choices too for the upper link mounts and what you may want to use. So leave that entirely up to you. But like I said, I used the Rock Jock Johnny joints and upgraded on that. So it was 595 for the one ton Dana 60 front truss. So for the rear, I chose the same. Uh, so there's a OEM and a high clearance version of their rear 14 bolt TJ one ton swap truss. Um, the high clearance version just takes the lower shock tabs um, and moves them up on the axle so that they're not hanging below the axle. That's really the only difference. I chose to go the high clearance route because I needed to move some of my shock stuff anyways and it doesn't just bolt up to the factory location anyways with the way that I was doing it. Um, so I changed that up. I used the high clearance rather than the OEM. And for that kit, it's four, let's call it 495, um, 492.99. We'll calculate that in at 495. Um, so that's how much that, that rear 14 bolt truss was. All right, so while we're also on the topic of Artec um, and all of the awesome products they have, I went with the Artec crossover steering uh, with the rod ends and joints. Um, it's a complete kit. I did it with, uh, you know, it's got the tubing with it already. It's got the Heim joints with it already. Um, so right out of the box, it's ready to go. You got to cut it to length, obviously, uh, which is something we played around with a little bit. And I'll kind of fill you in a little bit more on that as well. But um, that kit, it's on sale right now, I think for about 365. I spent 430 on it. We'll call it 430 on the high end. Um, we kind of want to overestimate a little bit on everything. If it's right about there, um, I'll give you full prices on all of the things that I purchased. So the crossover steering kit from Artec, 430 bucks. Let's add that to the mix. The next thing I thought about was I want to make sure that I've got enough clearance for the tires. And I really, at this point in the build, was looking at it and thought, we're gonna run at least 37s. We want to at least put that size tire under here for all the effort we're putting into this. Um, that said, I still had the four inch springs and at the beginning I thought, well, let's see how the four inch springs do. Let's see where this thing actually sits once it's in here. Um, but I was on a very tight time schedule trying to get this thing for a family vacation down to Moab. And I decided let's hit up Iron Rock Off-Road. We're gonna run their six and a half inch springs. Um, so that's exactly what we did. So the six and a half inch springs from Iron Rock Off-Road, I'm going to run you, calls it $188, we're going to round it to $190, $380 for the total set, it's $190 for the front, $190 for the rear, that's $380 for the springs all the way around. While we're on the topic of Iron Rock Off-Road, who's an awesome company and I appreciate all their help with this, um, we did the Tom Woods Slip Yoke Eliminator Kit for the MP. 
242 uh, with them as well. That'll run you $475. Um, I highly recommend it. It's not anything you'd necessarily need right off the bat. Um, especially if you're sticking with the stock axles. Um, you may not need to do some of that right, right away. Um, but with the change of uh, yoke that I have from a Dana 60 and the 14 bolt, um, I needed new drive shafts. And if I was gonna do the drive shafts, I wanted to make sure that the rear tail shaft of the transfer case was the proper length as well. So I just went ahead and did it. We did the slip yoke eliminator. And again, $475 will get you that kit. And it is an awesome kit and relatively easy to install. Um, I know that I did a video back a little bit ago. Um, I'll link that in here or I'll link it in the comments below and you can check that out as well. Um, but I did a full video on how I installed it and what it takes to really do it. It's not that complicated. Complicated. Um, if you're at all mechanically inclined, which I'm sure you are because you're watching this video, so I know that you are, um, you would be able to do that yourself. It's pretty easy to do. Um, you just got to pull your transfer case out. And actually, I've seen people who haven't taken their transfer case out and they've done it right inside the uh, the rig. Um, I don't know that I would try that. It's just a lot easier for me to unbolt it and put it on the bench and go through it entirely and reseal it. So. Um, that's what I did as well. So now we've got the slip yoke eliminator, the lift kit, the springs, the axles, the trusses, uh, all of the things. So uh, what's next? This dog in my neighborhood's driving me crazy. I won't stop barking. Hopefully you can't hear it. Anyways, so let's see. So we said slip yoke eliminator, um, which is a great segue into the drive shaft. So with the Dana 60 front, uh, it's actually a 1350 U-joint on the Dana 60. It's a 1410 on the GM 14 bolt and they're 1310s front and rear on the MP242. So um, I was looking at swapping out some things and trying to make it all complete so that they're all maybe 1410 all the way around or 1350 all the way around, but um, that was more work than it was worth. And so the easiest thing to do was just let Adam's drive shaft know Hey, uh, I need a front drive shaft with a 1310 on one end at the transfer case and a 1350 uh, at the other end for the uh, axle and then a 1310 for the transfer case and a 1410 for the axle for the rear drive shaft. Those guys are awesome. Um, actually, everything for the Durango was purchased from them too. Uh, for full custom drive shafts, built well and built for off-road, um, I spent $880 on those. Um, so that's our next cost, $880 from Adam's drive shaft. Uh, you can probably get those from other places locally if you want also, um, but personally, I really trust these guys. They've done a great job um, and they've helped me out and they build some great things and ship them out right away and they get to you in no time. So um, $880 for our drive shafts. All right, so keeping in line with uh, working our way through the drive line, uh, extended uh, brake lines. That was the other thing that I needed. Um, I use Crown Performance extended brake lines, both front and rear. Um, for a full set of those, it's gonna run you about 140 bucks. Um, I got mine from Northridge 4x4. Great guys on the other side of Washington State. Um, so extended brake lines, 140. What are drive lines and brake lines used for? To move these guys. So what did we go with? Um, these are race line wheels it's a 17 inch wheel um, and maxis razor tires they are 37 12 and a half 17s um, i was trying to find something that would be a, a really reliable on the road tire and perform well while also performing off-road so the price on those uh, it's 488 online right now let's just call it 490 um, the wheels are race line 17s, uh, 17 by nines with a minus 12 offset. Um, I think in the future, and we're not really talking about the future, but if I did something different, I'd probably go with a little bit more of an offset. Um, they're not terrible, but it's a minus 12 offset. So um, I'd go something a little bit deeper if it were me next time. I do have wheel spacers behind this, and we'll talk about how much those were as well. Um, but those wheels are about $255 each. So mounted, balanced, and out the door, the wheel and tire package for all four was $3,230. I use two inch wheel spacers um, all the way around. Uh, they're eight on six and a half lug pattern, obviously, for the one ton axles. Your 14 bolt is going to have a slightly different thread pitch than your Dana 60 is. Um, I think that's the case no matter what. They're gonna be a little bit different thread pitch, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get the correct thread pitch for those. Um, but that's it. Uh, those were $70 a set, so 
let's do my math real quick, 140 bucks for all four of them. Um, so 140 bucks, wheel spacers all the way around. You may not need them. I probably didn't need them, but I wanted them. I wanted to push out the wheels a little bit more than they were. Um, like I said too, you know, if I were to do it differently, um, and I may at some point when we swap out to 40 inch tires, I may sell this set of wheels and tires anyways, um, and do something that's a little bit more offset for a wheel, um, then you wouldn't need the uh, wheel spacers, but either way, $140 for the wheel spacers. All right, so I think that mostly takes care of the mechanical side of things. Um, the next couple of things are a little bit more, uh, well, they're still functional, um, but they're also for, for looks and aesthetics. Uh, the Detail Fab front bumper, that thing's awesome. I love it. He did a great job with it. If you haven't followed Daniel Till uh, or Detail Fab Works, I suggest giving him a follow. Uh, he has built a monster of a WJ. Uh, his is on coilovers and he's got, I think, 43 inch Mickey Thompson tires on it now. He did an LS swap. Uh, his is on a whole different level now, but uh, it's really awesome. And, and again, I just really like the bumpers he's built. I think he's done a really good job with it. So, Detail Fab Works bumper, he has some different options. If you just wanna do the bumper itself and not do the additional tubes that go with it, you can do that. Um, obviously, I've done all the tubes with it. And uh, the other thing that you can do is you can have him ship you a complete bumper, fully welded and ready to go. Or, if you wanna do it yourself, you can do the DIY method, which is what I did. So, for the DIY method, I don't remember how much it is. Hang on one second, let me check. Ugh. I keep forgetting to look up prices before I do the uh, the little overview. So for the Detail Fabworks bumper, um, again, what I chose for options, uh, we also added this skid plate for the radiator down below. Do a little pan in here. Um, we did the uh, radiator skid plate, um, and that was a DIY. Uh, I added two light tabs just because I thought I might want them, and the DIY with tubing um, instead of the welded kit. So grand total on that, 530 bucks. $530 for that bumper, welded it myself, uh, put in a little bit of time and effort on that instead. If you wanted it welded and out the door, it would be 860 bucks, um, you know, a couple hundred bucks to have it fully welded and shipped to you instead. Might save you some time, might be worth it to you, but you can make that decision and you can decide whether or not you want the tubing. Uh, that 860 bucks is all the tubing, the radiator skid, the bumper, all of it welded, ready to go, bolt it right up. Uh, but like I said, if you can do it yourself, that's what I did. Um, DIY radiator skid, DIY tubing, DIY bumper, uh, shipped all the uh, as uh, plates and it was 530 bucks. So I think that's an awesome deal and it was well worth it. All right, so I think the last two things on here are the lights, which was kind of a three pack. This guy, that pot up there, and this guy right here. Um, it was a three pack, it's Nylite. Um, I've used Nylite on other stuff. I've actually got one on the front of my uh, Dodge that I've used quite a bit. Um, I haven't used a lot of real fancy lighting. I know, you know, Rigid and a lot of those guys make awesome lights, uh, but this is just Nylite. It's an Amazon uh, brand that I've used. I really like them. They've always been really efficient. I am sure that there's like a lot more lumens and clarity and you know all of the things that go along with it. I just needed something that lit up well. Um, these three lights came together as a set for 60 bucks. So I think I picked up these extra couple of tabs that are on this front light and I wanted to make sure that that was the size that I wanted which went on the front tube. I was actually hoping it would tuck down under but it just doesn't so that's where it worked. Um, and then these brackets up here on the uh, small pod lights, um, I actually wasn't even sure about those. I picked them up and I thought, man, maybe they'll work, maybe they won't. They actually work awesome and I love that they're there. Um, I did a night run with a buddy of mine uh, during, I think it was King of LB weekend, um, and these things crushed it. My headlights suck, and I'm gonna have to upgrade headlights at some point just because they're just terrible. The bulbs in them are, aren't great, and uh, well, you can see they're, they're plenty used. So um, this is an awesome set of lights. Three lights, the mounts, everything. Um, the three lights, I think, together were 60 bucks. These little mounts up here were about 15 bucks. Um, I'm probably $90 total in all three of those lights and the mounts to go along with them. So let's call it 90 bucks for the lighting. And the last thing is the Warren Xeon 10S winch. Um, now, I think it's super important to have a winch. Uh, I, 
I'm kind of a loner, I'm not gonna lie. So I go out and do a lot of stuff by myself or I'll take the family out. And not having somebody with you is not always a great situation. But at least if you have a winch and you're prepared to self recover, that's something you can do. Um, I think a winch is really important. So. Warren is just a brand that I've always loved. Um, I think they do a great job with their products and I wanted something that was really reliable and trustworthy. So picked up the Warren Xeon 10S. It's got the synthetic line with it. Um, nothing fancy, no additional accessories or anything like that. Um, I know there's a lot of cool stuff out there. I know Factor 55 makes some really good products. All right, so the Warren Xeon 10S will run you about 1550. Uh, you can get that right through Northridge as well. Um, again, great company. Really like working with those guys. So um, that's it. That's all I can think of. Um, you know, everything else is. You know, there may be some materials here and there, uh, metal that I use, like you know, fabricating the upper shock mounts in the rear, or uh, the steel plate that I use to cover up the hole where the uh, spare tire was when I cut that out. Um, I think I got a hose for the fuel tank, um, some hose clamps here and there. Both diffs were opened up and filled with fluid since they were axles from the junkyard. I wanted to make sure that the diff fluid in both was good to go and that they were, uh, you know, there was no pieces of metal or anything like that in them. So, you know, the cost of gear oil, uh, so that's stuff I already had anyways. Um, I actually buy it, usually buy at least the five gallon bucket and have a pump with it. Uh, it's something that I switch out in the tow rig fairly often. Um, just wanna make sure that we've got fresh gear oil in there. And so same thing with this. Um, that's about all I can think of in terms of costs. All right, so what's our grand total look like? I'm gonna read off this list a little bit. I wanna make sure that uh, we've got everything on here. So uh, we originally purchased the Jeep for $4,200. The lift kit was $1,650 from Rough Country. I purchased junkyard axles for $1,000. Uh, from Artec Industries, we picked up a front TJ one ton swap truss uh, for both the Dana 60 front uh, at 595 and the 14 bolt rear at 495. Uh, our tech also got us the crossover steering at $430. Uh, we went to Iron Rock off-road and picked up six and a half inch coil springs for 380 bucks and a Tom Woods slip yoke eliminator for the MP242 for $475. Uh, Adam's drive shaft helped us out with the uh, drive lines, both front and rear. That was $880. Uh, we got extended brake lines from Northridge uh, 4x4. Uh, those cost us about 140 bucks. Uh, Detail Fab Works, we picked up the DIY bumper and tubing. Uh, with the radiator cross member that was $530 uh, Warren Xeon 10s winch was fifteen hundred and fifty bucks our miscellaneous lights and mounts were about ninety dollars total uh, four wheel spacers at two inches all the way around were 140 bucks and our wheels and tires were 3230 for a grand total with the cost of the Jeep of fifteen thousand seven hundred and eighty five dollars uh, that brings us in just below sixteen thousand dollars and there's no corners cut on this. I mean, it's not re-geared or locked yet, um, but for a one-ton rig on 37-inch tires and steering the way that it needs to, uh, fully drivable, capable down the road, do 80 miles an hour down the highway, I mean, do the speed limit down the highway, um, and then take it off-road and beat on it quite a bit too. It's really hard to beat that. Um, again, I know I said, I, I did one of the other videos on what it costs to get a Wrangler, but um, even if you were to get like a locked up Rubicon that's got you know lockers front and rear and Dana 44s, which is a three quarter ton axle, those things are super expensive right now. Uh, I'll look up a couple today as of the video and see what they're going for. Um, but I know right now if I'm looking at certain rigs, I mean, they're well over $20,000 to find a Rubicon like that. So, um, you know, and that's again, three quarter ton and it may have, you know, some 35s on it and a little bit of a lift. Um, if you find one, it may just be a factory Rubicon with stock wheels and tires and, you know, lockers, which is great. If that's what you want, if that's what you need, um, the work's done for you and you don't have to worry about it, that's great. Um, but I think personally for 16,000 bucks, to get a Jeep uh, that's in great shape, and this one was, uh, be able to put one ton axles underneath it, um, 
and have something super unique, something that I really like to drive, something that I'm proud that I built, um, and something that we're gonna keep growing on and expanding with. Um, I think that that's a uh, pretty good value right there. Now, I didn't do this all at once either, right? So I mentioned that I bought the Jeep back in 2017 for $4,200. Um, I've had it for a while. I picked up the lift kit. <laughs> I didn't realize it till I followed up with Rough Country on a couple of things, but I think I bought it back two years ago, or it was at the end of 2019, uh, beginning of 2020, something like that, which, wow, we're in 2023, so it would actually be longer than that, but I put it on last year, so either way, it was about two years that I had that lift kit. Um, I just kind of pulled the trigger on it one day thinking I'm going to make this happen. Same thing with the axles. The axles sat in my yard for probably a year and a half, two years, and I just hung on to them knowing that at some point I was going to do all of this. So uh, saved up the money, saved up the parts, just kept getting ready to prep and do something like this. And then we pulled the trigger on it. Do you have to do it this way? No, absolutely not. If uh, you just want to get a lift kit um, and build your WJ with the factory axles, it's such a good platform to do it with. And I would encourage you to do so. Um, there's just a ton of support out there for it. There's lots of parts. There's lots of different builds. Um, and this one's been a really fun one. So what's next for it? Because you guys asked for it, you told me what you wanted to see, that's exactly what we're gonna do. I've got uh, Grizzly lockers, front and rear, and new Yukon 538 gears, um, full rebuild kits, and I found a buddy who's gonna cruise up here and help me with that one day. I haven't set that stuff up from scratch myself. Um, I hear the 14 bolt isn't too bad, but the Dana 60 is kind of a pain in the neck when it comes to uh, pinion depth. So he's gonna come up one day, I'm gonna pull the axles out from underneath this thing and we're gonna get the gears and lockers all set up on this. Um, so we already have that stuff, that's ready to go. Uh, the steering's gonna get done. Uh, just made a phone call today and uh, we're gonna get a hydraulic assist ram. Uh, I'm gonna ship off the power steering um, box that we have right now and we're gonna get that thing set up. Uh, they put stops in that. I'm gonna give you an entire breakdown of what that box is actually gonna get done to it. Um, I don't think I'm gonna order springs yet. One of the things I talked about in my last video was uh, doing eight inch coil springs to kind of lift this thing a little bit more and allow uh, 40 inch tires to be run on it. But I actually think the six and a half inch springs will be fine. Um, we may get a different wheel that actually has a little bit more offset to it and uh, set a 40 up on that. We'll see what we end up with, um, but I think at the very least for the beginning, uh, we're gonna try to run 40s on the six and a half inch springs because I'd like to keep it on a lower center of gravity. Um, I like where the long arms are um, in terms of relation to the ground right now and I don't really wanna lift it much more if I don't have to. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but we're gonna do hydro assist and get that set up. As a part of the steering, we're gonna do a double shear kit. So when we have the front axle off to do the gears, um, what we're also gonna do is fabricate some double shear uh, parts on the knuckles themselves so that the steering and both the drag link and the tie rod uh, has uh, some extra setup. We're also gonna put stops on the back of the knuckles. Uh, there's already stops on the front of the knuckles and I'll show you that for steering. So when you max it out, it can only go so far. However, um, that doesn't mean, especially with the hydraulic assist ram on it, that it's gonna stop it from going all the way in the back. And Jeff Howe from Howe Performance kind of schooled me on that big time. Um, and what he was telling me when we spoke uh, down at King of the Hammers, um, really smart dude and has a lot of knowledge from doing this for so long. Um, so we're gonna put uh, stops on the back side of the knuckles for the uh, front steering axle as well. So that's the next phase for the WJ. We're gonna get the steering going. Um, oh, the transmission, yeah, that's the other thing. We're gonna get a new transmission in it. Um, this one's just shot, we'll see how long this lasts, and that's probably another good test anyways, is re-gearing it um, with 538s and then also running 40s. Will that add longevity to a used trans? Maybe, um, it might, it, it should help a little bit, um, but we'll find out at some point. Um, what I'll likely do is build the one that we take out as a backup, so we'll rebuild that one. Um, I may end up sticking it in there sooner uh, anyways um, after we rebuild it, but for now, we're gonna get the used one we have in here um, and get that going. So put the transmission in, re-gear and lock 
both axles front and rear and steering we got all that to get set up we're going to do the hydro assist that's next and get it on 40 inch tires so next phase is uh, going to be underway here pretty quick these are things we're going to do um, still knocking stuff out on the Durango and uh, like I said last time I'll give you an update video on that because we've got a motor that's almost wrapped up uh, I'm hoping we're going to be able to get it on an engine run stand and maybe we can check that out before it's actually in the Durango and hear uh, all the work that we've got going on with that here it run see what it'll do uh, get us a little more excited to get it in the Durango as well but that's a wrap for this episode. I appreciate you guys watching. I really appreciate your input. If you've got any other suggestions, comments, things that you think you'd like to share, please do so in the comments down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, hit that bell notification so you don't miss out, and we'll see you on the next one.